Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Silva, trainer at Pragmatic Works. Welcome back to another video here where we take a look at how we can use Power Automate just to make our lives that much easier. Today's video is on taking a look at SharePoint, an item stored in a SharePoint list, and be able to export those into a PDF. So we can take that entire SharePoint list, condense it down, save it as a PDF file, say if you wanna print it, store it somewhere else, we can go ahead and use that in just another way to look at it. So we're gonna jump right into our use case today to take a look at the end product, where the data is being stored, and then we'll go ahead and build our flow from there. So to start off, this is the SharePoint list that we're gonna be using. What you can see is that we have a couple items here for our travel request. And when you look at the travel request, you can see I just have a few different travel requests already stored in there. Say this is something you use in your office if you wanna go ahead and um, have any type of, of travel or meeting scheduled then you wanna write that off to have the, the company pay for it. This is a, a basic uh, list that we have here that came straight from SharePoint. The one thing we want to take from this list is not quite what the content is inside, is how we can take this content, select the exact columns that we want to use, and then go ahead and store them inside of a PDF. So if you look at our list right here, we're going to try to take some of these items and store them in a PDF that looks like this. So if you'll see that the PDF file that we have, it's we have chosen just four simple columns in this case, our trip, our reason, um, the start date formatted specifically in that format as well, and also the airline that was selected in the choice column. So what we're gonna do next is take a look at how we can build out this flow with Power Automate to get that SharePoint list to be set up just like this table to be exported as a PDF. So let's go ahead to make.powerautomate.com and start building out our list from there. All right, so all we're gonna do here is get started by building out an instant cloud flow. If I select here, I'm just gonna create a name for my instant cloud flow. We'll call this our SharePoint to PDF, just kind of a basic name for our flow. And then from there, we're just gonna choose a manual trigger, right? This is really good for testing purposes. You could really obviously use this if you want to um, have any type of uh, event trigger by using your automated cloud flow when an item's created or a certain interval by using a scheduled cloud flow. You can choose them differently, but in this case, because we're just gonna test this, we're gonna use a manual trigger. And then we're gonna select create. Now keeping in mind what we're trying to develop here, we want to go ahead and develop a flow that takes that SharePoint list specific content on that SharePoint list, filter down if we want to, to be able to export it as a PDF. So the very first step that we wanna take when we work with our flow here is to go ahead and get those items from SharePoint. So I'm gonna select add new step and we're gonna search for get items. And as we go to get items, there's our very first one, get items. We want all of the items from that SharePoint list to be able to filter down by. So I'm gonna select that one there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and choose my site address and my list name. Ours is gonna be on our bootcamp here. And then we're gonna go into the list name, our travel requests. And then from here, what I'm actually gonna do is select our advanced options. And inside of our advanced options, what I wanna do is just filter down this query. So instead of returning everything from the list and going over and iterating over that list over and over on each row, I'm gonna filter that down to the selected values on a specific column so I don't have to get every single item every single time. By doing this, what we're preventing is this little flow checker up here to have this, war this uh, warning for the get item step. You can see here using the O data filter queries can improve our performance. Well, that's exactly what we're about to do. We're gonna improve that performance by filtering this down to a, a selected value or a range of values so we don't have that pop up each time. So for my fl uh, filter query right here, we're gonna take a look and we're gonna use our travel start date. Now, we're gonna take a look at our list real quick and on our travel start date, we're gonna say we only want items that are in the future. So we're gonna say everything that is greater than or equal to right now. So if I come back here to create our flow, I'm gonna come in and look at my travel start date is greater than or equal to, and then I'm gonna use some expression here, expression language, I'm gonna use a single quote, and then go into my expression right here, 
And what I want to have is UTC now, the very first one there. That's what I'd like to add in to capture the local time that I'm working with and the date as well. And then add that in there. I'm going to wrap that in my single quotes to make sure that it's capturing that expression perfectly. So the next item, now that I have my filter query all organized there, is we can add in another step. Now, if you think about this logically, and that's the best thing about Power Automate is it allows us to think about each and every step in a logical sequence. So if we are going to now get those items from the SharePoint list, what I now like to do is create a table to be exported for our PDF, this table right here. So if I want this table to be a nice little format where I can have a header, or I can have like a bold or a different color, I can do all these things. I first need to be able to establish that table before I can throw different items inside of it. So coming back to our flow here, we're gonna go to search create HTML table. And there it is, there's our data operation create HTML table. And now we're going to create this table from the items on the SharePoint list. So if I select in the from field here, we can use our value, our list of items from SharePoint to be able to add in for this HTML table. So I'm going to select our value dynamic content. And then once I click in here, I can see my advanced options. And we have an option here to have our columns automatically determined, which is going to bring back every single column or if we want, we can choose our custom columns. And that's what I'm gonna choose this time because I only wanna bring back four different fields. My first field that I wanna bring back, and again, this is our end result that we're looking for, is our trip title. So I'm gonna come here and in my header, just type trip. And then for our value, we're gonna use some dynamic content in this case to pull back that trip value. So in this case, that is the very first column listed in our SharePoint list, which in the back end is always stored as the title. So we'll go ahead and grab the title from SharePoint. And then our second column here is going to be our reason. And we'll use our dynamic content as well. There's our reason for travel. And then our third column, this is going to be our start date on this one. And now over here, if we were to add in our travel start date, one of the things that we'll notice is the way that it's stored, it's gonna be a year, month, day format or year, day, month format. Not really something that I would like to have returned. So what I'm gonna do in order to get the structure of my start date to show my month, day, year, is I'm gonna do a little bit of our expression language here to format that date in the exact way that I'd like to see it. So in my expression, I'm gonna just search for format, and you'll notice once you start typing in format, you can see the very first one, format date time. Well, that's exactly what I wanna do. And then for this, I'm gonna do an opening parentheses and say, okay, what do I wanna format? How, and, and how would I like to format it afterwards? So if I come over here to my dynamic content, on some of the fields, when we're working specifically with SharePoint or other items, we can go ahead and find that field inside of our dynamic content. But in this case, we're looking at the entire list, so we're not gonna be able to find a specific value. So we're gonna have to use some hard-coded expression language inside of it. So in this, we wanna format the date time of a specific item, right? One specific item here on our, tra our travel request list. For that, we need to choose the item and then say how to format that item. So back here with our dynamic content and our expression language, we're gonna go ahead and put item, a single item in this case, we can hit tab. And then when we work with this item, we're gonna go ahead and use our question mark to move to the next series here. And now we need to declare which exact item we want. So we're gonna use some square brackets and a single quote to say that we wanna use our travel start date. And again, that is how it's being stored here on our SharePoint list. If you're curious on how to learn how they're being stored, come over here into your list settings and on your list settings, choose one of those columns and it will be up here in your URL. It'll provide you the field equals and that equals is going to tell you the exact value that you'll have for your uh, field. So I'm going to go ahead and travel start date. Let me make sure I'm going to move over a little bit so I can see it. All right. Now what I want is to add a comma in here and to declare the exact format that I wanna have. Let me get rid of this out of the way there. I'm gonna come back in here 
and it looks like I might have to pop it again. Let's do it real quick. Format, date, time. I want to format a specific item, okay? And the item that I want to format is our travel start date. Okay, there's our timestamp there. We're gonna move into the next value, the exact format that I'm looking to put. And for this one, let me click in to move that out of the way and move across there. Okay, is I want to structure this in a month, day, year format. Okay, two digit month followed by forward slash, two digit day forward slash, and four digit year to end that out. Okay, so there's our little format there. Once I've gotten that, I'm gonna go ahead and click in and put my format date time there for our start date. Then there's one last column I'm gonna reference in here and that's gonna be the airline that was selected. Now over here in our value, when we go and look for airline, there is a, an option here for the airline from our SharePoint list. I'm not gonna choose this one because the airline for my case is a choice column. Okay, right in here, this is a choice column. You can see here by the, by the this distinction right there. Because it's the choice column, I wanna make sure we're using the selected choice. And in this case, that is cho shown, showing here as the airline value, the actual value of the selection. So if I select that, that's gonna give me the structure of my table that I wanna see. All right, so now we have our items. We've created an HTML table from those items. The next thing I wanna do is uh, set up my table to just look kind of nice. So I'm gonna come in here and add a new step. And this step, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come into here, I'm gonna take some styling that's saved as a some CSS styling here. I'm gonna copy all of them and I'm gonna add that in. So just to make sure it's gonna give me some of this background, the headers, the, the column lines, the row lines, just the organization of that. And I'll have those added inside of our files here as an attachment for the video as well. And in order to use those, that for the, the styling there, I'm gonna use a composed data operation. So we're gonna add that in here, simply just paste in that CSS styling that's in here. And you can see if my table header, the background color, the border, we have the font size, the weight, the color exactly, and these are all hex colors that we can change if we like the border left, border right, all these different styling techniques that we wanna use. They're all displayed here inside of that. All right, so we have, <clears throat> To review, we have manually triggered our flow. We said we wanted to get all of the items from the SharePoint list, create an HTML table with the selected columns that we have from that SharePoint list, compose the table, have a little bit of styling in it. So now we're ready to go ahead and create our files and convert them. So the very next step I want is to create that HTML file. Because remember, we're storing it as an HTML table, so we need to create a file that can store that HTML table. And then we'll convert that HTML file into a PDF. So in this case, we're gonna create file. We're gonna use OneDrive for business. And the folder path for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and pick my folder path here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose my Power Automate folder right there. The file name, we can just call this whatever we'd like, but I'll call this maybe my HTML table with, let me put a space in there, with .html. Very important you put that .html in there to make sure we're storing it as that HTML file. And now the file content, well this is where we're gonna say, I want these values right here to be placed into my content. So we're gonna use some of that dynamic content to make sure we're grabbing those two values, the actual HTML table and the styling of that table itself. So the first thing I wanna do is add in my styling, the outputs from my compose, and then I'm gonna add in the table afterwards. So it's utilizing the styling and then putting the table in that style. So we've now created our file. The very next step is to go ahead and convert that file. And then finally, once we have that conversion, we can go ahead and create that file to be stored in our OneDrive. So our next step here, we're gonna do a convert file. Go ahead and it's the first one there. Convert file, it's still in preview for OneDrive for Business, but it works quite well. 
and we're gonna say the file that we wanna convert is the one that we've just created. So we're gonna go ahead and use that dynamic content and we're gonna do it by the ID field from the create file step. You can see it's right there. And the target type, yep, PDF works just fine. You'll notice if you hit the drop down, there's other different file types that we can choose from, but we're gonna choose PDF in this case. And then one last step for us before we're all said and done is to add a new step. And this last step is to create that PDF file. So we're gonna create file. We're gonna go back to OneDrive for Business. And this case, we're gonna store it in the same location as we did our HTML table. And we'll make sure that we're using the same name and everything's right there for us. So we're gonna come here in our folder path. I'm gonna choose the same location. I'm gonna choose my Power Automate folder. And now we can take our file name and our file content from that convert file action. So file name, we're gonna choose file name. File content, we're gonna choose file content. Now we've gone in and said, we want to manually trigger the flow, get all the items from the SharePoint list, everything here, filter it down so the travel start date is greater than today, so in the future. Show four columns, We're in this case we chose our title, our reason for travel, our start date, and the airline selected. Then we're gonna format that table, okay, that HTML table with a little bit of styling, save it as an HTML table, then convert it to a PDF and save that PDF here in OneDrive. Okay, so I'll go back here, it's gonna be saved right here. So let's go ahead and save and test this and see the final product at work. I'll go ahead and close out the older one and let's take a look at this new one. Okay, it's ready to go. Let's go ahead and test it. We're gonna do a manual trigger, hit test, continue there and run the flow. Let's take a look. And our flow is running, we're creating the file, the conversion is all said and done. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Oh, I see I have my HTML table that was originally saved and here it is, just seconds ago, our HTML table with CSS styling. And you can see here, it's been filtered down to in the future, so I'm only seeing the two values that come into the future and we'll zoom in on that. There they are, okay? And we are all said and done. So now that we've taken a look at using Power Automate to pull from SharePoint, go through a process of formatting this HTML table, converting the HTML table into a PDF and then saving it here into OneDrive, we can take this, add it in as an email if we so chose, we can print it, we can do so many things because of the current format that we are now saving it. Well, thanks for joining me here again today as we take a look at using Power Automate to help drive any business process we have to take over any of those manual repetitive processes that we just really don't enjoy doing anymore. We can utilize Power Automate here in the cloud and of course Power Automate Desktop with RPA to take over those processes and really make our lives that much better. Well, thanks and I'll see everyone next one next week in our next video.